Smith's uh, run on Doctor Who. Which means we're all wearing blue suspenders and, and yeah, ties, right? Exactly. Yeah. You watched my episode where I, where I talked about the uh, the bow tie thing? No, just what Tennant and Tennant and Smith have been doing for the last No, um I actually I actually figured out that um, there there was actually a divide um, anything that takes place after the eleventh hour he wore he wore red. Anything that happened before that he wore blue. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. It, anytime you move forward in time, yeah. it's red. Yeah, exactly. And, and Tenet would do the same thing with ties and suits. I, I never noticed the suits, yeah. but I was really happy when I discovered that. But uh, <laughs> back on track here, um, we are discussing The Beast Below. Um, I am your host, David Beauchamp, and I am joined by... Angela Pritchett. And Drew Meyer. Okay, um, so... Um, thinking back, or... Um, I, I just almost just rewatch it, so I almost have to think back. What did you guys think of The Beast Below? You know what? I really like it. I really like it. I don't think it's Stephen Moffat's best story, but I really like it. I liked it, but I thought the guys were really creepy in it and everything. There has to be certain, like, visual and types of stuff in it to make me like certain things. So, I, it wasn't my favorite episode, though, with the, from that season as well. But. Wow, I'm the odd man out. I did not like it. Yeah? I was not a fan of The Beast Below, um, and it could be because we came off of such a great episode mm -hmm. um, with The Eleventh Hour that I was sorely let down by The Beast Below. It is by far probably, I won't say it's the one I like the least, but it's definitely... Uh, when you say it's the one you like the least, are we talking about Moffat episodes yeah, I'm talking, or no, I'm season I'm talking, five? I'm, I'm talking about season five. Um, I'm just <laughs> series five. Um, no, just Sorry, not a huge, five. yeah. Just not a huge fan of this episode, and I thought it had, I thought it could have had potential in the long run mm -hmm. with you know the way they like to drop hints and clues. But I thought, I, but it, it eventually fell flat for the clues. Okay, well, well, tell me what you didn't like about him. I'm curious. Just the whole thing. I just the, I didn't like the pacing. I didn't like the. I didn't like. I didn't like much about it. Um, when was the last time you saw it? Probably within the past year, because hmm. I go back and rewatch um, all, all the Who when, when I don't have something else to do or if I'm writing, I throw it in. Right. I, I you know, and I'll just play hit play all, and I, I just go through. I just I've just I've not been an, a fan of the episode uh, from the very beginning. I thought they you know I thought they lost some some really good uh, potential story elements, like when she's in that machine, you know, and she hit the you know the forget button. I always thought that. She forgot something else, like a conversation with the doctor, like the doctor snuck in there or talked to her, or somebody else talked to her. Because at this time, we knew that the villain was going to be in every single episode. Um, they had talked a lot about, you know, things to come with spoilers and stuff like that. Because that, at the time, I was still, this was before GPR, and I, I, I was still reading all the spoilers and stuff like that. Mm. And I thought that, was, that would have been a great moment where, you know, we're going to have a flashback showing that, you know, there was this huge conversation that occurred while she was in that box. And when she hit the forget thing, you know, she forgot the entire thing, but it was going to come back and be a key point. Um, but that, nothing, nothing ever happened there. But, I mean, there were some very important clues in there with, it's, there's some clues about the silence in, in this episode. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I just, overall, just not a fan. I just, I did not like it. I just, I just saw the drug and it kept going on and on and on. But that's just me. I'm just not a fan across the board on this one. All right. Angel, what'd you like about it? I liked the visuals in this one overall, just because I thought the little dudes with the frowny faces were very creepy, and I'm going to be very not... It's been forever since I saw this. I saw this sure. when it first aired, so I don't remember a whole lot about it, but I also thought it was just... I don't know, there's just creepy stuff. Like at the beginning when the little girl's crying, mm -hmm. and Amy's like trying to figure out what's wrong with her, just sitting there going, wait, her, her friend was taken where? 
what? This is kind of creepy if this was, you know, what really happened to our world if we had to evacuate and all get on a ship and it was very creepy. I'm assuming that the audience, of course, remembers this episode uh, as well. But um, yeah, I, like, I watched it a couple days ago, so it's still pretty fresh in my memory. I went back and watched um, season five. Yeah. You know, just had some free time, went ahead and watched them. Um, and actually, I think my opinion of the show has increased since the previous time to watching it. Um, I had high hopes for it because it was a Stephen Moffat episode. So I didn't know it was Stephen Moffat. That's really interesting to find out. It's, it's not a typical Moffat, but here's the thing. One of the things I really liked about this Moffat episode is it didn't feel like they were rehashing old ideas. Yeah. And I know it's a complaint among the Who community that Moffat takes the same one or two ideas and takes, starts there and, and goes yeah. out. But I thought The Beast Below was a good future. Um, I, I compare it to say, um, was it the end of the earth, uh, with Rose, the second Rose episode where they go into the future yeah. and you've got the last human and the, the woman from the forest of Cheem. Cassandra. Um, Cassandra's, yeah, the Cassandra, the, I still don't understand how Cassandra talks, but that doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not a skin thing. It's a muscular, thing. anyway, that's science fiction, science fantasy. I, I remember that. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a very cool first ending for Amy. <laughs> Amy, by her lonesome, uh, going out with the doctor. She it's her first the, adventure not on Earth. It's her first adventure not <laughs> on Earth. She's in her um, 90 pretty much the entire I time. I think that's one, another thing that bothered me. <laughs> a little too Arthur Dent for you? I guess. I don't know. I just I thought it was silly. Well, I like the idea that she went. There wasn't a... By the way, there's a whole room of clothing here. <laughs> there you can, is. It, it, just, it just skipped my mind. Here we go. Let's jump in there. Um, I think that Liz 10, as a character, was really brilliant. Yeah. Everything they did with her, um, I, I don't, not that I felt that the actress was bad, I felt that, um, I don't know, maybe the directing uh, with, with that character could have been more, I wanted, to, I wanted to see more Liz 10. And, and I'll tell you what really I found irksome is that when the action figures for Series 5 came out, they released two characters. No, I'm sorry. I mean, even three characters from that episode. Um, they it was in the um, the white smiler and the black smiler, yeah. who were both the um, what do they call themselves? The, the smilers were the the, the things, hooded. the hooded guys. But they have a they have another name. The, you know, the smilers are the the creepy faces. Mm -hmm. The guys with the keys, uh, the winders, uh, are the fronts. So they had two two versions of those guys, but they didn't have a Liz Ten. I think Liz 10 would have made a much cooler action figure. She actually looks like an action figure. Um, but I think this, it almost harkened back to almost a Sylvester McCoy in the creepy factor, almost something similar oh, yeah. to the greatest show on, on yeah. in the galaxy. Um, I like the idea of a space whale. To me, that felt very Douglas Adams. Um, See, there are elements I liked about it. I liked Liz 10. I liked the space whale. I love the, the scene with the water. Because it showed how eccentric, it, uh, eccentric, I can't pronounce the word I'm thinking of. The doctor is, you know, he's looking at the water. I almost wanted, I oh, almost, the glass of water. Yeah, I almost gotcha. wanted, to, I almost wanted him to hear it before, you know, because oh, that's to, what's, because to listen to yeah. the, in the, in the Tom Baker thing. But the reason why I know they had issues with Liz Ten um, and the actress, she's, she was, she's, she's very famous over in England. Oh, okay. and they really wanted her for the episode. But they only had her for a very small amount of time. Gotcha. So they didn't get a chance to work with her. And that also could have been the reason why they didn't have an action figure. Her likeness might already be owned by another company. Oh, gotcha. Um, Ugh, legal. Le the legal stuff. Um, because yeah, List List Ten would have been a great action figure. She was she was one of the more interesting things. I liked the space whale. There were li lots of little things I liked about the episode, but it just didn't all it didn't congeal for me. They did something really interesting with it, and, and it might be a little trickier since it's been so long, yeah. but they continue this pattern, and we talked about this with um, the 11th hour. They continue this pattern where the doctor, we see how the doctor sees. Yeah. That makes sense. He actually brings Amy over, says, look, and you hear, like, gears turning as he's showing her why. It's very Sherlock. Yeah. And again, this is, this is the time of the first season of Sherlock. It really felt like um, Moffat was was being influenced by his own show. 
which I, I, I found very interesting. Um, so they didn't do it nearly as much as they did in the 11th hour. I thought uh, season uh, one of Sherlock came out. After. Was, a after. It did. Yeah, okay. But he was still working on it. Was he working on it at the time? I thought he, I thought he started working on it at, at about the halfway point. I'm not sure, but it also depends on when they wrote them and filmed them, yeah, too. So I good. don't have the, the production yeah. schedule. Okay, so it could be that Sherlock got some ideas yeah. from the Doctor. And, but, you know, looking back in retrospect, it looks like it was the, uh, yeah. the other way around. But um, I thought it was, a, it was decent. The special effects, as far as the weird root-like tentacle stabby things that were running around... It was a little odd. I felt there were some ideas that they, didn't, they could have fleshed out more. Um, I wouldn't have minded this being a two-parter, actually. I think this could have... It didn't need to be, but I think it could have been. That, that, might, that, you know, that might have worked better for me. Mm. And also, this isn't the first time they've mentioned this fleet of ships. I forget in what other episode, but I think it was, it was back during uh, Davy's run, where they actually talk about all the different ships that leave Earth. Mm. And because this isn't the first time they've, they've talked about this, this fleet uh -huh. of all these ships that went out from Earth. It actually might have been the, um, it might have been the, um, the second episode with Eccleston, where he talks about, you know, oh. the, all, the, all the ships leaving Earth. Well, it's Earth. not the 51st century. Uh, I believe it's... it's something else but it could be because talking about solar radiation blast the earth so <coughs> leaves and they come back yeah um though they speaking of ships they had a little weird thing where they said that scotland gets its own ship yeah uh, and of course amy's like oh what yeah. oh with scotland but i don't think they got their own space whale no <laughs> so it, it makes me wonder a little bit about that and and um it's a really good second episode i think for viewers um it's a bit scary it Definitely says, hey, if you've never watched Doctor Who after the eleventh hour, this is—it's very much an Eccleston kind of formation where you look at it, uh, story-wise, and you see that there's something dark and, and grim behind the Doctor. He's lonely. They really emphasize this uh, before moving into. Since I didn't like the episode, and you guys really did, is there anything about the episode that you didn't like that you, the, that you can remember that that stands out? That's something you didn't like about the episode. Um, well, like I said, things with Liz 10, I felt that um, maybe it, it could it lacked a little bit of direction in that. Um, special effects weren't yeah. up to par as some of the other episodes. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that I loved it. On, on, on a, if I were to grade it, yeah. which I think I guess we are still doing that. Yeah, right? we're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll worry. We'll worry oh, go ahead yeah. and say, I would give it um, a three. Pulling seven five, like three and three quarters. Like it's, if I went back and looked at all the other shows, yeah. I gave fours to. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would. I would put it up there. I really liked it. You know, I would. Okay, if I have to, four. It's not a three. If we're not doing halves, it's a four. Um, well, we do halves, not the okay. three point seven five. Fine, it's a three and a half. <laughs> it's a three and a half. Three and three quarters. This isn't Harry bet. Potter. So, was there anything you didn't like about the episode? Well, like I said, it's been yeah. forever since I've seen it. But, I mean, I can remember this one not being one of my fav like super favorites, but I still enjoyed it. So, I didn't hate it, but it also wasn't, like, up there with all the others that I loved, loved, loved. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, it was fun to watch, and I didn't dread watching through it. Because <laughs> there's generally episodes you'll see, and by halfway you're like... Will this end already? Yeah. I so, like the two-parter from this season. So having, say, having seen it recently, yeah. I can say that if you put it on right now, I'd still watch it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'd, I'd watch any of the Who episodes. So, Drew rated this a, as a 3.5, Derpy Tardis. What would you rate this as? So was it a 3.5 or was it a 4? I'm going to give it a 3.5. Okay. I'd say 3.5, too. Yeah. And I would give it two Derpy Tardises. Okay. Um... So that's just me. So that what equals out to about a three. Yeah. Yeah. So you know about three different characters. Trust me, there's worse episodes of New Who. There's worse episodes of Classic Who. We'll be talking about that worse episode next time as we review now, Victory see, of the Daleks. See, I disagree. I really liked Victory of the Daleks. Um, but, that, <laughs> but that's gonna be the next episode. Uh, so um, yeah, if you, anything else you want to say about this episode? No, I'm uh, good. Okay. So uh, this is GPR uh, signing off. Until next time. Bye. Peace.
Let's go. Look at it on, on tonight. It's hard to find you.